Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys, one guy the same age as one guy, and another guy who I think is a little older than me, maybe? I don't know. Talk about old games. That, <laughs> that probably made a lot of sense to everybody. Yes. Like, yeah, I, uh, I understood the dynamic clearly and precisely. Two guys. Okay, wait. Off to is, a flying start. <laughs> two guys the same age? Around the same age? Two guys around I, the same age. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm right in that creamy middle between you guys. Because <laughs> I guess I'm the youngest. I'm the Nicole today. I'm the youngest person on. You're the Nicole. I think so. I'll, I like it. I like it when you say, I'm the Nicole. <laughs> I'm the Nicole. <laughs> I'm the topping everybody. <laughs> <laughs> talk about old games well not not in this case since it's other shit monday we think about anything this is more of a newer current game people are playing and talking about and enjoying specifically this is a we've talked about this, this oh is, this, this is the is first a, in a new series this is a todd pod mm-hmm. this is a tyler or dave mm-hmm. play old games but well, shit, I wish I hadn't like spelled it out because this is not an old game that we're going to talk about today. This is very new. It's a super new game. So, Todd, Todd Pnog. Snog. <laughs> Pnog. <laughs> so it's a, day, it's a day of mini firsts because we've got the first Todd Pog, mm-hmm. and it's the first episode in which we are bringing in Sandwich Pope, Phil Hawkins. The religious uh, guidance of this group. I know you guys have had four... Um, religious leaders on there, but none of them, none of them are popes. So. <laughs> that is true. I feel like I, I really outrank Blake and Meg and the others. Yeah, yeah, Wiley course. and Tim. Wiley and <laughs> what? Tim. So what's your Tim favorite? sounds made up. Tim. Tim well, he, he barely sounds anything because we had bad audio on that episode of Super Mario All Stars. So he's been on once, has he's, bad audio. He, he, yeah, like, that's like half an episode. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite sandwich, Phil? Uh, that'd be the club sandwich, I believe. Although I think I emailed you guys with a list of my favorite sandwiches, so you can probably go back and check that. <laughs> I'm doing it right but now. But I think it's a club. That's what I order most when I get a sandwich. I think you've answered that before. Yeah, I think club sounds familiar. Club's a good sandwich. Yeah, it's the standard. Um, and our other our other guest host of of Wolf Fighting Fame, and I was going to give him another title, but I forgot what it, I was going to say. Oh man! But of Wolf Fighting Fame. Jacob York. Hi. Hey, you guys. Wolf fighting is fine by me. Yeah. That's all I need. Just to fight some damn wolves. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> Jacob and I have both been drinking, so Jacob um, more so than I. I'm super Well, drunk. and this is the, this, uh, moreover, this is, uh, it's not typically a thing that I do. I have uh, probably drank to excess one other time in my life. So, um... I'm interested to see what the night brings. What's the occasion? I, you know, I just kind of feel honored. Yeah, it's Phil. It's Phil. I just wanted to, you know, it's more than anything. It's just that we uh, got a pizza, and I wanted to, you know, it's Tuesday. (laughs) He drinks whenever he gets pizza. (laughs) Why not? So, so yeah, that's where I am. I'm not judging, by the way. I, I, I I drink whenever I want. I Whenever I want. <laughs> Try and stop me. <laughs> Fuck it. I fucking wish you would, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. I drink whenever I want. Fuck you. Deal with it. <laughs> My name's Dave Moore, you fucking dickhead. I want a gun. Why didn't you call in with the uh, the impression contest with that one? <laughs> old, old Drinking Dave Moore. It's got the good wrestling name. Drinking Dave. <laughs> You know I love wrestling. <laughs> I've been working on that character for a long time. I, I was I was trying to do something like when I had aspirations of like I was like, man, I'd love to be on like some kind of sketch show and I'll do like drinking Dave and it'll be great. And I worked on this character and then that didn't work out. So I was like, you know what I'll do? I will just wrestle some dudes in my backyard. 
<laughs> and we'll film it, put it on YouTube. Five people will watch it. <laughs> It'll be cool. So you got to come to those uh, uh, auditions with a number of characters, and you have Cave Manny, and you have Drinking Dave. Like, <laughs> Uga? You, you got to start. You got Nolan. Yeah, I do. I mean, <laughs> Nolan. <laughs> Nolan. Who, who, who is a amateur wrestler? So <laughs> I really enjoyed the the Nolan's appearance on the show. I I thought it was. Very funny. I did too. I wish he'd come back sometime. <laughs> right. To be fair, Cave Manny is totally. That's all Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> straight that's, straight that's, from up here. Tyler's character. Straight from this uh, Ryan Styles kind of improv <laughs> mind, just throwing <laughs> shit out there. <laughs> Let's put it Call, on. Color mockery. Ask me for tips. <laughs> it's shit like that. So. <laughs> but first, before we get into that, I'm your beard host Tyler, and um, I had kind of an intro story. Uh, prepared, but I think I'm going to save it and instead uh, spin a tale of of education, of culinary education. Okay. Because I've told the story once of a, uh, a chef instructor I had in culinary school that he talked about his experience at a snack cake company. Like Hostess or something like that? <clears throat> something like that. Schmostess? Oh, no. <laughs> something like that. Because I told the story about him. Is this going to gross me there. out? Because Little Debbies are like one of my favorite things in the world. Um, <laughs> These are little schmabbies. Maybe. It's fine. Oh, no. I'll, 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 cl- I'll clarify. <laughs> I mean, I've told this before. And I'm going to bring it up before I go on the next one. Uh, but I'll tell you a- afterward which company is it is off, okay. off the mic. So, um, But he was working in like they had these huge cylinders where they would process all their, the flour and stuff and make all the dough and everything. And I mean, I mean, enormous, enormous things. And he started one up in the morning and it was going, making the dough for like cupcakes or whatever they had going that day. And they were adding more flour and more things into it. And they added something in and then they just see this stream of red going in the middle. And Stra- strawberry. My instructor thought yeah. it was strawberry. Strawberry, it's fine. And, but the more he looked, he's like, no, that's that's not strawberry. He goes and gets the like the foreman of the factory, and he's like, "Oh, sometimes rats get in those nope. bags." Nope. <laughs> nope. And he's like, "We'll all get fired for waste if we dump this out." So just roll with it. Granted, this was like thirty years. This is like thirty years ago, but you know anything after the jungle that, like that is over the line. But this this same chef like that that showed, showed me Upton that story. Sinclair references yeah. <laughs> at dad box raising their stakes now the boss has a strict policy against wasting rat meat <laughs> <laughs> we make it into all our cupcakes but the other story he told me is uh right when he was getting his start um he got employed by a not a chain restaurant but it was similar to like an applebee's or something like that like a but an independent bistro style, semi nice kind of establishment. And he was hired as the pastry chef. And he was fresh out of like school and things like that. So he wanted to make an impression. So he took his. He's like, no rats here. <laughs> All rats. 100% rats. He wanted to make an impression. I want to make an impression. <laughs> <laughs> and he. Oh, uh, just wanted to make some fantastic dessert. So he spends a lot of his budget on just like the best chocolate, like very, very high quality. Like, and so just so listeners know, like to tell how quality chocolate is, like if you have a bar of chocolate, to tell how nice it is. If you break it in half, it has a very, very audible snap. It has a lot of resistance and snap to it. If it just crumbles or just breaks apart, like say a Hershey bar, um, it's not, it's not quality. And if it's gray in any way, it has melted, and they just tried to freeze it again and pass it off because you know at that point it's not as good once it melts and then reconstitutes. So if you ever see gray chocolate, that's what happens. It's like a beer. Don't eat, don't eat it when yeah. it gets hot, and then you're like, oh shit, and you put it back in the fridge. Yeah, it's never as good. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know, probably, you know that probably. <laughs> <laughs> but he started making all these desserts made out of just amazing, excellent chocolate, and they were not selling for shit. And he was worried about losing his job. Um, and they told him he had to cut back costs. So, okay, well, he goes down to nice chocolate, but not great chocolate. His dessert starts selling a little bit better. I'm not sure what's going on. They congratulate him. He made better. And just to experiment, the next time he does ordering for chocolate, he orders another tier lower. Dessert sales go, go up further. So then the next time around, he just orders bottom of the barrel 
cheap, cheap chocolate. Just rat blood. Just, just pure <laughs> rat blood. That's the brand. <laughs> Kroger brand rat blood chocolate. <laughs> and his desserts go through the roof. Like they are selling like crazy. Are the prices like are the is the price price, of- price remains the same. <laughs> okay. So it's just and what it is, it is a thing uh, about it's about Americans really because uh, as Americans, when we want chocolate, we want gooey, warm chocolate and like some sort of a dessert. Nice chocolate doesn't really do that as well. So cheap chocolate that has way more like vegetable oil and byproducts in it will melt and be gooier. So it's not, we don't even care how good the chocolate tastes. We just want the inside of our chocolate lava cake. So once he realized like that, oh, all right, he's British. So he's like, okay, Americans just want the shit chocolate. Great. And he makes a whole thing just about cheap, just super gooey chocolate and his desserts just, then they're all over town. Then everybody's Hmm. talking about them. Huh. Yeah. So how does like how does good cho- how does like good quality chocolate melt? Uh it usually have to have more fat with it, like add heavy cream. Huh. <coughs> what the so fuck? It's, Phil? it's still really good then. <laughs> <laughs> I covered my mic. <laughs> Nothing. Shit Every time nice. I cough it's come through. <laughs> 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 but it Is always that, has to be fat good? or oil <laughs> in good. chocolate. If you ever huh. add like any amount of water, your chocolate's ruined. Hmm. I'm having a weird deja vu. Like we've had a conversation about chocolate while Phil dry coughs into the mics before. <laughs> Did I dream this or has this happened in the past? <laughs> I feel like this it's is just Groundhog Day. Happened. You're living it over and over again. <laughs> Well, if there's one thing I'm not going to do different, it's stop Phil from coughing into the mics. I would never do that to you, Phil. <laughs> You'll know it's it's Groundhog Day if I say something really awkward that makes everyone pause for about three seconds sometime in the show. So We're looking forward to that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I still enjoyed the, uh, the man pog whenever you called in. Okay, I fucked up. I'm going to call back. <laughs> and Nikki's like, okay, we'll talk to you later then. <laughs> <laughs> You only get one take. At least here, if you guys fuck up really, really badly, you can, you know, stop it, cut it, and get rid of it. But no. If it's, I know if I'm calling time. in on Unless, the phone, like, you're going to air that shit no matter what. There so was like, one you got, time. You got one take to get it right, and if you don't, mm, too bad. I called in at one point and then immediately sent Dave a text message and said, do not put that on the air. Did and I? I feel like, no, you didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I feel, like, I feel like you know me well enough to know that, like, I am fine with like a little screw up, but if it's something I really don't want on the air, um, you won't put it on the air. I feel like I feel like we know each other as well long as enough. I remember. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why I asked. Like, did we not? Did we yeah. do that thing or not? Because like, um, well, it's like Zach, right? The one time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was. Well, I know yeah. my. I know my first phone call. I asked you guys specifically to cut it out before I like. I tripped up. I was literally reading a script, asking you guys a question, and. <laughs> Like, just flubbed on what I was reading midway through it and was just like, God, fuck, damn it. <laughs> I'll call back, whatever. You and went so full Paul Cole. I asked you guys gotcha. not, to, uh, <laughs> not to air that part, and you graciously did not, so appreciate that. You're welcome. I was just about to ask you, did we do that? <laughs> no, no, that was back, like, the first 20 or 30 episodes where you guys were, like, very, very um, careful with all your listeners. Didn't want to upset anybody or, or, you know, lose any cherished listeners like me, so... And look how far you've come. Now you sound totally cohesive and ready and ready to actually be on an episode. So I, I feel like that's how I fake my way through work anyway. Just just a bundle of nerves and angst <laughs> with a slack jawed uh, facade. So, yeah. Oh, so you're like what would happen if Josh and Nicole did the fusion dance. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Someone liked my actor page the other day that was named Josh Nicole. (laughs) I was really thrown off by it. What's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I am your bespectacled host, and I continue to live my life on the fringe of weird sexual things. Um, (laughs) End of story. Yeah. I'm always like in the peripheral of like some kind of like. You made Meg Thing pause her game on. and turn around. Yeah, I see it. I see that. Man, Meg, I've Do never tell. seen you look at me like that before. Um, Curiosity, Dave. I, um, like periphery? Well, well, you know about... Um, Weird sexual 
Yeah, right? <laughs> You're well-versed. Uh, you know about the uh, photograph that I was in of a yes. uh, mm-hmm. some kind of benefit where a woman has um, <laughs> some <laughs> Cetaphil face wash in her lap. Um, did, I, did I see this photo? Describe it for me, Dave. Uh, I mean, Phil, I'm trying to like keep you with a job. Which, I mean, I can I can go as I can go as blue as you want me to. Yeah, your your wife requested we try to keep you employed for you to be on the show. But I am trying really hard to curb the things that I say. So of course I want to bring this story up. Um, yeah, yeah. So that happened, and then I uh, I got this text message yesterday <laughs> that uh, it was just random at seven o two p.m. It's from a five three zero area code. I get a message that says, "Hello, master." <laughs> <laughs> and like so I'm playing Darkest Dungeon and like I kind of look down and I'm like what? <laughs> and I'm like well I'm going to continue to play this game because clearly this is some kind of wrong number or something so I keep playing and then I see another message pop up like five minutes later it says from bondage pal <laughs> <laughs> so thanks bondage I, pal. I signed you up for the service bondage, <laughs> bondage pal dot <laughs> com <laughs> <laughs> you just get random, you know, what masochistic a- <laughs> or bottom bottom slave messages. Have what you, a have weird you name! The plush, uh, plush dolls that they make are great. <laughs> <laughs> the Bondage Pal brand plush yeah. doll. Time me to they this got, radiator they got and throw gimp, tomatoes they got at Dominatrix. me. They got all of them. <laughs> From Bandage Pal. So, of course, I... New by Funko. I did a search for my phone number, because I was like, who put me on Craigslist? <laughs> and uh, I didn't find anything, so... Um, Speaking of Craigslist, we never found out who put... Made that Tadpog ad in Atlanta for uh, the... Um, it was not me. The gay, the gay hookup voicemail that we yeah. got. So a few of those, way a long time ago. Yeah, it was a very... So long I found out who did that. It was I actually not listened to that one within the last month, maybe, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember you guys sounding mm. very kind of awkward at the end of it, like going into it, like very excited. And then you listen to it and like, <laughs> you know, now that I listen to it, it's it's not that funny. Yeah. Really. Because we listened to like a little bit of it outside of it. Yeah. And we started laughing. I save know. it, save it, save it. Then we listened to the whole thing. It's like, it's like oh, oh, I'm kind of sad. Mm. This guy is not going to get what he's looking for at it's all. It's just a dude that got stood up looking <laughs> yeah, for I know. a <laughs> night of noncommittal love. So speaking so who's, of that. Who's, who's driving down pal? there to blow this guy? <laughs> speaking of that, I didn't know what to do about bondage, pal. I was like, <laughs> do I reply back to this message? Like, I don't want to be rude. Um, but I feel like anything that I would reply back to would be construed as me being um, the dom. <laughs> <laughs> Or it's like, you had the wrong number. And it's like, well, wait. Then oh, just- <laughs> I'm so sorry, Master. Can we, what is like the right number? Maybe? <laughs> Daddy is playing games. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Nikki, I was like, what should I do? And she was pretty much like, uh, she just pretty much just rolled her eyes. I was like, I don't, I don't care about this. <laughs> I get so many of these, I just ignore them now. Yeah. Duh. Send them back a picture of your dick with a bow on it. <laughs> you think that's what I should do? That's a good, that's a good thing. <laughs> right? That yeah. feels like a thing they'd like yeah. to have. Yeah. I feel like I could make that into a GIF and yeah. put it on Giphy and like that's my just send my your, reaction Send win. your Mario Paint animation of the <laughs> <laughs> the dick. <laughs> What's up, Jacob? Hey, man. How you feeling? I'm well. How are you? I am. I am good. Are you? How? How? You seem well put together, yeah, considering you've been drinking. I'm fine. I think. I feel fine. I. Uh, I'm yawning more than usual, um, and that has nothing to do with uh, the quality of of discussion that is happening. And I get a. It gets a little bit swimmy if I stand up. I think, but That's generally, just the I'm fine. talking. Yeah. What? <laughs> Someone shot me in the butt with a tranquilizer. What? <laughs> but yeah, generally I'm fine. So. You got a? You got anything? Got an intro story? You got any? Are you bondage pal? <laughs> I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> but if you want me to talk about it, I will, master. <laughs> but see, uh, now I think Meg is bondage pal because as soon as you brought that up, Meg huh? was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I uh. <laughs> Do you know what area code 530 is? Yeah. Um, it is a California area code. I know that. Oh, much. yeah. So. It, is, it, is it Josh? Is it Time Lord Josh Edwards? <laughs> <laughs> it's in California. 
Maybe that is know. possible. Maybe. And we know Josh is a very he's a very fierce bottom. So, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely not bondage pal, and I definitely did not put you guys on Craigslist. So, so that's me. That's me, and that's my life. That's that's where that we are. Right that's now. all that I have to tell you. Bondage pal. <laughs> What's up, Phil? Not much, not much. Um, thank you for having me on the show, guys. This is cool. You know, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I am I am a, a bearded and bespectacled longtime listener, first time co host. So um, mm-hmm. this will be kind of interesting. Am I? How many like listeners turned co hosts have you had on here now? Uh, man, we don't keep records like that. <laughs> uh, you, Micah, Micah, Paul, Sam, and Joe. Okay. Uh, both both Chandra. Pauls. Chandra. Chandra. Oh, Chandra and Paul. Yep. So I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm in a long story tradition here. You're you're in our top ten. Top so, ten. I think I might be the only person who was on an episode before I listened to it because I feel like even like Miller and Josh probably listened to it. Yeah, Josh had listened to your episode on. before he was on Uniracer because Josh yeah. was on episode three. Um. But I think I'm the only person, except so for just, maybe. You listen to the pilot episode and you're like, yeah, I, I could do this. I did not listen to the pilot episode <laughs> before I was on, I think. I just don't think that I was up here fast enough that. We did it pretty much around the same time, yeah. too, yeah. I think. It's like we did it, it got confirmed on iTunes, and then like, let's see, well, Jacob's going to be in town, let's have him on Final Fight. Right. Okay. Because yeah. I was number two. I'm still concerned about Final Fight. Yeah, I I watched a little playthrough video. No, that it's 100. I still think that's bullshit. (laughs) I I agree with you. (laughs) It's really bullshit. I understand that they don't have two-player option, and that's like a huge drawback. And they wanted to start it off strong. They wanted it to be like, hey, here's this game that you recognize. Right. I understand that, but but I feel like it kind of gets thrown under the bus because it's like, well, most people know Final Fight. But would you, let me ask you this, would you rather be number 100 and have everyone look at your game or be number 94. It's better than 94. And have, well, I, it, <laughs> that may be, but like, if you're at 100, yeah. everyone's going to look at your right. game. Right, that's true. So, But I don't think they need it at this point, right? It's well, like, I know we know. already sold all our copies. I don't know. You <laughs> never know. Whenever Final Fight comes up on, because that might sell additional sort of like, we Mike Hagar posters. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> God, Mike Hagar for mayor. <laughs> I would. Up. I would put that in my yeah, house. Yeah, right. Yeah, that election poster. That's actually a really good idea. Hagar Cody, twenty sixteen. Bumper. With, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would it be a picture of him like uh, in the wrestling ring, or would he be trying to be professional, like in a suit? What would it be? I think it's both. I think yeah. you got to do both. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, because everyone knows him because of his wrestling right. career. Yeah, exactly. But I think a casual like rolled up white sleeve button down formal shirt. Yeah, with a, that's good. A red, kind of like the Jesse Ventura look. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Like he's in the ring, but he's wearing the suit. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. You just wrote the commercial. There you we just go. Wrote, yeah, that's crazy. Anybody see Jesse Ventura on the Nat- on the Natley show like last week? Uh-uh. No. No. It's so fucking crazy. So fucking crazy he talking knows. about him going to he's going to be running for president. Of course he is. As a libertarian, but that he's not a libertarian. So he wants to be the first president unaffiliated with any political party and that he'll he will get elected solely based on that fact <laughs> because people are tired of people in political pot- parties. He's an he's our first yeah. anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our first anarchist president. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> So Phil, we just hijacked uh, everything that you were saying. I don't no, know. that's that's fine. I'm I'm a very I'm kind of a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have that a- was five seconds of just me saying nothing? <laughs> I love you, it. Keep do it in you there. have an intro? Um, I do, I do. Uh, um, so I kind of have like when I need to tell a story like this, a good intro story. Um, I kind of have my go-to one um, that won't get me fired because actually my coworkers have actually already heard it, so I'm good on that department. But it's it's kind of how my wife and I uh, became friends freshman year in college. We we had kind of already met and knew each other, um, but but I helped break the ice our freshman year, which kind of set the stage for our eventual coupling, like three years down the road. So. 
Yeah, no. Um, so we both went to the University of Puget Sound. Um, and the dorm room that we were, the, the dorm we were in, was co-ed. Um, it alternated men and women for every single uh, room. And Progressive. Yeah, I know. It's, it's that liberal arts. That's what you pay <laughs> that $35,000 a year to get, you know, to see some women on your floor. But, um, yeah, a few months, months into our freshman year, I was hanging out with some buddies one night. Uh, one of them, you know, Dave, it's Travis uh, from, the, from the HOTS group. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we were hanging out in Travis's room, uh, drinking old English malt liquor 40s mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. playing Grand Theft Auto 3 <laughs> together. And, I mean, times were tough. You're kind of like cheap college freshmen that don't have any money. So we pretty much put all of our liquor funds into cheap uh, malt liquor and and for whatever reason, yeah, just drinking old English um, just to get Stinko every weekend. It was cheap. Not was even gross. Mad Dog. <laughs> no, not even <laughs> Mad Dog. I think you couldn't get that at the convenience store. So, not the one that we were at. I know it's at every convenience store, but no. You gotta <laughs> settle. Even. I get it. Four Loco yeah. wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, no. For that brief, like, 18-month window when it was Old English always. I've never, I've never drank pine salt, but <laughs> old English always felt like I was drinking some kind of like wood varnish or something like my, that. My friend uh, Jay Brent exclusively drinks that every time we get together. <sighs> old, he gets a huge thing of old English, throws on his bathrobe, and that, that that's that's uh, his thing. It's gross. So yeah, I think I think drinking that shit now would just give me some awful, awful flashbacks. Just like when you smell something that you haven't smelled in ten years, and you just get this vivid just. Recollection. I think drinking a a forty of old E would have the same effect. No. Old E, but, man. <sighs> but no. Anyway, so I'm I'm drinking with the guys. Um, I've had two already and break into my third, um, and I'm working on that. And then nothing like fade to black, dra- blackout, drunk for the rest of the night. And I wake up the next morning in my own bed down the hall from where I was drinking, and I was wearing a button up short sleeve shirt and nothing else did you naked from the waist down the did sexiest you? of looks is a man with yeah. a nice shirt oh, yeah. and no pants you oh, know yeah. the the donald duck <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i was i was donald ducking it up and um i don't sleep naked like tyler does so like i in fact i was very very modest uh, and ashamed of my nudity back when i was younger so you gotta, so. You gotta change that shit man well, I, it, it's gotten better now, but back then it was like I was very alarmed and upset to be waking naked from the waist down and um, gather myself. <laughs> That's so funny to me, the idea of you waking up and being like trying to just cover up your dick and balls. I think no. I would, honestly, I think I would be alarmed, too, because I would be like. Waking up in a button-up shirt and nothing else. Who's and just be looking like, at me? Did I fall asleep at work or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened to where I was, like, maybe trying to go somewhere and then just decided <laughs> to get fucking naked and lie down? Did I try to go to church? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did I go to fuck church? <laughs> <laughs> What's stupid is that I was pairing this, like, nice button-up shirt with athletic shorts. Like, that was my Friday night <laughs> hanging out ensemble. No, um, I get that. I did that, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when I go outside of my dorm room and, and look down the hall, I see my shorts about 20 yards away. And about 10 yards beyond that, I see like my signature tidy whitey underpants. Like back, <laughs> back when I, I wore just the most stain showing awful white underpants. Possible. Like those are mine. It's definitely mine. So no. My stomach dropped <laughs> <laughs> because I had clearly gotten like blacked out drunk. Uh, went back to my room, left my room, and then started getting naked the further I got <laughs> On away. On the way. Or, yeah, and I have no idea. And I'm like panicking because I have this anxiety that I've done something like super embarrassing naked last night and I have no idea what it was. <laughs> and clearly um, the evidence points to that you have done that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I did a bunch of detective work. I'll, I'll spare you. But, you know, talking to various folks, I, I pieced together what the story was after I'd gotten blacked out drunk, which was – I came back to my room, sat down to play StarCraft with, with my roommate, Greg, who, um, uh, uh, Greg, if you are listening, I'm sorry for living with me for the year and having to listen to me masturbate at, <laughs> at 3 a.m. And I always felt that like if, if he 
if he hears it, he'll say something. And then, <laughs> like, no, he won't. Like, <laughs> five or six, no, yeah. yeah, five or six years down the road, I I kind of was thinking back to that. I'm like, no, he probably just sat there and listened to it and tried to like. <laughs> well, but like in, in fairness to you, if you waited until three o'clock in the morning to jerk off, that was a pretty considerate move on your part. Well, yeah, it's no coincidence. That is that's the jerking hour. <laughs> I mean, it is. Well, I, it's I mean, well documented. I guess I, I I still set my alarm and I get up to do it then. <laughs> oh, it's three <laughs> shit. Oh man. You can see the neighbor getting up for his, you know, long short job. Ben. Like, yep. You guys wait. <laughs> then why do you think I do it at three? <laughs> three yeah. In the morning. Yeah, getting that Ford pickup. Yeah. <laughs> that good longshoreman jerk. Yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, so uh, apparently I I finished while well, I was playing StarCraft, finished my forty and abruptly got up and I thought, I thought you were saying you came during StarCraft for a second there. Yeah. I finished, you know, during <laughs> StarCraft. I did that <laughs> carry <Zerg> rush! <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, but I went down the the hall to my buddy's room looking for a, a fourth, I guess, and took off my clothes on the way down there. And, and to this day, this is kind of the part of the story that remains at least. No one knows why, but I proceeded to get naked from the waist down and go into my buddy's room half naked to root around through their fridge for another old English. <laughs> That's what I think I did. In reality, I entered the room next to their room, which happened to be the room of my future wife. <laughs> and, her roommate. and she was like, I like that. Yes, yeah, she obviously yeah. was. I'll take yeah, some of that, but it needs because, to grow first. Let's let it cultivate for about three years. Because <laughs> women totally like when 11 o'clock at night, uh, a drunk, <laughs> naked man walks into their room with a thousand yard stare on their eyes and will <laughs> acknowledge you or listen to you. So, <laughs> are, you, you, are you going to rape me, old English? <laughs> But the way Maureen describes it, like she was like, hi, Phil. And her roommate was in there as well. And they were both like, (laughs) they were in their bed, but, you know, sitting up and reading and just like this 180 pound half naked hairy man opens their door, (laughs) doesn't acknowledge them, doesn't look at them, walks in uh, silent, (laughs) goes over to the mini fridge, bends down, opens it up, flashing my goods to Maureen. (laughs) (laughs) Finding no alcohol, I stand back up, turn around, and walk out the room without saying a word. <laughs> it's, it's like you went into animal form or something. <laughs> well, it's a good thing That's you're theft, like, right? <laughs> it's a good thing you're like eleven inches soft. <laughs> it goes back down when you get hard. It's weird like that, but like it's impressive soft to walk in like that. Coincidentally, eleven inches soft is the name of my future band. So <laughs> it just consolidates. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my my wife and her roommate share a bemused chuckle immediately locking the door afterwards, which, <laughs> is, which is good because I tried to go back in a few minutes later. <laughs> but um, sometime later in the evening, one of my buddies coming back from a party found me naked from the waist down with my shirt on, uh, passed out, uh, slumped in the hallway across from my future <laughs> wife's door, and he helped me up brought me back to my room where my roommate was still playing StarCraft and I guess probably gave me the weirdest fucking look you could give to a drunk, naked person. He was probably uh, thinking, at least he's not going to masturbate at 3 a.m. this morning. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember anything. Finally, I I I get an (laughs) evening (laughs) off. (laughs) This was probably at like midnight, so it very well could have happened. (laughs) But yeah, when I I found out all this that happened, um, I bought my wife and her roommate a, a potted flower and wrote a very sincere apology. The and traditional dick apology. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Left it on their doorstep because I did not want to see or talk to them ever again after that. But um, I forget how we made up, but we eventually did. And it blew over pretty quickly. And we became pretty good friends throughout the next few years and eventually started dating our senior year. So, yeah. <laughs> That's one of those things. I think it's pretty rare that a woman sees your dick before she decides she wants to date you. Not so like it's Jacob. Yeah, like you like you must have the goods, man. Congratulations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a that's quite the meat cute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Emmy <laughs> Emmy <laughs> <laughs> uh, Your story yeah, reminded me right. the exact <laughs> joke. <laughs> I remember uh, living in my second apartment in college, and I remember just being on the couch watching television. 
And then a guy just walked in. A guy I've never seen before just walked in and sat down on the chair next to me. And I just continued to watch TV. And I kind of just looked over at him and I was like, hey. And he was like, hey, man. He was like clearly drunk. And it was, he's like, how's it going? I was like, it's going, it's going pretty good. I'm just watching some uh, Nick at Night, having a good time. And then so I just like keep watching. I just, I'm like, <laughs> I just go back to watching the television. And about three minutes go by. And he like all of a sudden like snaps to and like looks around the room and looks at me and says, I don't live here. And then he left. <laughs> <laughs> Vanished into the wild. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he had pants on. <laughs> that was not me. <laughs> so I've got a I've got a question. What what is Heroes of the Storm? Oh my god. I'm curious about that too. As I don't know anything about it really. You kinda know a little bit about Do it. You hear well that sound? I should because I've walked oh, into no. your living room with you playing watching my videos. Hot's, my hot's den. But <laughs> but also there is a attractive large breasted woman in the left hand corner of the screen, and that is where my eye is drawn to. So yeah. I don't really know what's going on in the rest of the screen. <laughs> Is this part of the game that I haven't unlocked yet? or Yeah, what? you got to get level 40, and then she just <laughs> appears. Uh, Tyler's referring to uh, Yui. Uh, she's, a, she's a Twitch streamer who is... Uh, a really character from hots. Sword Art Online. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and she does, she cosplays, um, and she makes a shitload of money. A shitload of money. I remember telling Nicole about this, and she was so frustrated. <laughs> oh, she makes a lot of money. Like I, I'll watch, I'll watch her stream. Like I'd come home from work and uh, take care of Henry and like get him fed and all that. And so I can't play any games while I'm doing that. So I've actually kind of been turned on to streaming recently. It was a thing I've never really was interested in because I always felt like why watch a game when I can play a game? And now all of a sudden I'm in a very specific situation where I can't play a game, so fuck it, let's watch a game. Uh, I had to choose between a whole bunch of streamers, and I was like, she's incredibly attractive, so we will watch <laughs> We will watch her stream. Uh, sorry, Paul Cluel. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, I mean, you're, you're a very lovely gentleman. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's... Um, that's kind of one of those things where I think it's actually uh, it's a fun game to to watch being played too, when you know what's going on. Um, I say that you kind of know what it is because on your Steam challenge, didn't you play Awesome Knots? Yes, I did. <coughs> is that that's a MOBA, right? <laughs> I don't know what a MOBA is exactly. Okay, it's the cousin to Moby. It's <laughs> oh okay, it's the female Moby yeah. to MOBA. Okay. Uh, it's a multiplayer online battle arena. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and you got probably called all kinds of like, you, you probably had your intelligence brought into question. Oh, I didn't play with Your any sexuality of that shit on. maybe brought into question. I only got the in game battle commands of come on, oh, come okay. on. So, then, oh, then yeah. you didn't play a MOBA. <laughs> uh, 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 come up, come up. Uh. We'll have to put that Wind Waker, Wind, Wind Waker gag in the show notes. But, you know, I mean, I hated it at first, but then I got sort of into it. But once I was done, I was totally done. Like, I put five or six hours into it and was like, oh, okay, I get what's going on here. I don't do this anymore. Time to keep going. Um, did you level up characters in that game? Yes. Okay. So it sounds, it sounds similar. You I pick I, multiple characters. You could unlock different characters. Yeah. And, yeah. Did it? Did you have to like buy characters or anything like that, or are they just unlocked through natural progression? I don't remember if there were any micro transactions. I think it was just progression. Because I was thinking about that earlier, where it's like, man, now that I've played Heroes of the Storm and we're about to talk about it on the show, maybe I should play Awesome Knots and um, see how it is. Um, but do you want to? This is a Todd Pog. Do you want to do a Dave read some Wikipedia, or do you want to go off script? Hey, you you tell us about this game however you want to, man. Okay, um, we I one hey. of my yes, I want Dave reads from you want it. I do. Yeah, I'm sorry, Phil, you want it? Okay, badly. We'll do it. I do. Really bad. I do hear that. I do hear that train. Um, bondage, bondage train. <laughs> Just leaving the station. Hello. It's hello, master. Well, it's more like. Yeah, it's just a, it's a muffled. It's a really. It's a gimp train. Yeah, that's coming in. It's a train with a ball gag. <laughs> 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 
Which, of course, ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Heroes of the Storm, originally titled Blizzard Dota and later changed to Blizzard All-Stars, is a multiple uh, multiplayer online battle arena video game developed by Blizzard Entertainment for Microsoft Windows and OS X. The game features heroes from Blizzard's franchises, including Warcraft, Diablo, and StarCraft. Um, they're leaving out the Lost Vikings, so shame on you, Wikipedia uh, <laughs> editor. The game uses both free-to-play and freemium models and is supported by micropayments, which can be used to purchase heroes, visual alterations for the heroes, uh, and mounts. Uh, Blizzard does not call the game uh, a MOBA, or an action real-time strategy because they feel it is something different with a broader play style. They refer to it as an online hero brawler. Uh, the game entered closed beta on January 13th, 2015, and the full version of the game was released on June 2nd, 2015. I think they just want to distance themselves from the uh, toxic culture that surrounds uh, MOBA games. I think that's why they call it a hero brawler. Okay. Makes sense. Well, uh, Hero Brawler is a fun, sort of more descriptive name. I know more of what that means than Based on those if two you words. say MOBA. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think Blizzard's pretty good about appealing to uh, mass. Yeah, especially, you know, that's something that they, it feels like um, in the last couple of years, between this and Hearthstone, they have sort of uh, switch their perspective it feels like um and going less and less toward more like big budget here is a huge fucking game games uh and more toward these small addictive um but bite-sized experiences um, how can we how can we milk as much from our three major franchises as possible well yeah, yeah. and it's it's the sort of it feels to me like the sort of final form of pay to win games, so to speak, because I think that this is Hearthstone particularly, I think is something that looks like, I think that everyone could get into and could last for years and years and years. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to describe what, I'm going to, but I have obviously had alcohol, and it's uh, <laughs> well, it's think, interfering with me right now. I Help me out, Hearthstone Dave. is following that very much the Magic the Gathering exactly um, model, where it's we're going to release, we're going to develop a game, and we're going to release the cards that you need to play the game, and then what we're going to do to make money is we're going to release expansions that have mm-hmm. cards in it that are better than the cards that you start out with. So I, I see what you mean by like the pay to win. Um. Well, and also I, I think that that's because I've heard you talk a little bit about Hearthstone before, and it feels like a thing that um, you don't necessarily have to play pay to win, but you pay to customize the experience in the way that you want it to be. Kind of. Right. And that's, kind of. that's, that's closer to what Heroes of the Storm is, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. You're not paying to win in this game. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be playing it. Um, right. You, you, the wins are entirely de- based on, on your skill level in it, which is, which is nice. Even though you do have to pay like piecemeal individually for each hero, you still, like, you could buy just a, a 2,000 gold. That's like the base minimum you amount you, you pay for. And you can buy one and be amazing at that character and wipe the floor with people if you're, if you're good enough, or you can mm-hmm. um, decide to go in and buy the expanded roster of all 40 some odd heroes and just kind of experiment and pick and choose which one you feel uh, most, most comfortable with. So yeah, it's, it's pretty neat that way, but there's no one that is terribly overpowered. <clears throat> um, I mean, I wouldn't no. They they do a really good job of trying to make it balanced. Um, at any given time, there are top tier characters in the in the meta, and Blizzard with patches they try to um, speak to that. Yeah, and try to balance it. It's kind of like if you've ever played World of Warcraft, which Jacob, I know you did a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know there were class imbalances in that game, and it felt like every big patch. Um, 
one class was getting nerfed, another one was yeah. getting a buff. That's pretty much how it is in Heroes of the Storm okay. as well. Like if um, if there's a, a hero that's performing extremely well, uh, like over fifty percent win rate, they will they start tinkering with uh, yeah. the mechanics. Well, and I feel like I pro- I feel like I sort of cut you guys off whenever you were talking about what the game is. So I, what is the game? Okay. How do you play it? So the game is <clears throat> there are two teams of five, and there are things there are things that are consistent. They stay consistent through all games, uh, and there's two teams of five, and you uh, each have a core, and that's that's your base. You have this large structure at your base that you want to maintain. You don't want that to be destroyed because that's the end objective. Um, is you want to destroy your team's core and uh, your opponent's uh, core, and your your opponents want to destroy your core. Whoever's core is destroyed first um, loses the game. So that's the ba- that's the big thing. That's the win objective every single time. Um, and then you have defense structures uh, called towers and keeps um, that are kind of like little checkpoints where and they defend your lane. So each map usually has, typically they have three lanes. And in each lane, there is a tower, there's a keep. And the towers and the keeps, they fire cannons. They fire um, at any kind of uh, hero, uh, opposing hero or opposing minion that comes, uh, comes up to it. So the whole thing is you are trying to push and destroy you're trying to get through the your opponent's towers and keeps so you can get to their core and destroy it. Um, and then they start introducing different um, mechanics uh, based on what map you're on that can help you achieve that goal. So like one of them, for instance, is called um, Blackheart's Bay. And it is set up just like I said. It's got two cores, towers, and keeps. Um, but the main mechanic, the main objective there is um, a pirate will spawn and he asks for doubloons and there are different points on the map where you can go out and kill things to collect doubloons. You, you get enough of them and go to him and, and pay him. Um, and then he'll start <laughs> releasing a barrage of giant cannonballs on your enemies, towers, keeps and core. So that's where it gets, that's where they start changing things up because a a different map um, is a giant angel and a giant demon fighting each other in the middle, the very middle of the map. Um, One team is going to be on the demon side and another team is going to be on the angel side. So when they start fighting, um, the teams rush to the middle and try to either um, take out the, the enemy uh, or they try to defend their their angel or demon. So they start introducing different mechanics. They overlay different um, objectives on top of the uh, pretty static goal of the game. So explain to me r- real quick, uh, what this is sounding like to me right now is if is if like Warcraft 3 PvP only had a headquarters and no resource management. Does yeah. that? Yeah, it is. And actually, okay. the um, the genre came from Warcraft Three, a Warcraft okay. Three mod um, called Dota. That's Dota was a Warcraft oh, Three mod. Defense of the Ancients. Is uh, that it? I believe yeah. so. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not well versed in this at all. I just know this from hearing things while playing Heroes of the Storm. So I may be inaccurate on some of this stuff. But yeah, it was this genre was born from Warcraft Three. And I think it's one of those weird things where Blizzard, years later, comes back and it's like, oh, yeah, well, we'll do this thing that was spawned from our property. I believe uh, if you read further down on the Wikipedia, I was reading on the Wikipedia as well uh, beforehand. And I guess there was some some legal dispute between Blizzard and Valve over who owns the rights to Dota. And um, that eventually spawned what would become Blizzard All Stars, which would then become Heroes of the Storm. So it kind of it came out of that and and eventually um, created, you know, a third competitor to League of Legends and Dota, which I haven't played 
I haven't played either of those games. This is no, the, neither have I. This is the only game of this type. I hear unless I you've already been playing League of Legends for five years, don't play League of Legends. It's daunting because it's like they have a roster of over two hundred characters. I think. Um, <laughs> is this really? Yeah, Rhythm Master Paul Korn was telling me about it, and how and like it's not super balanced. Like there are some who are just way better than the others. So like, it's almost like a trap. Yeah, I see. I can't. I can't get on board with that. And also, I feel like everyone who's playing that game is already really good at that game. <laughs> and it's like I've got no room to come in and be like, "All right, well, let's have some fun." Because yeah, let's let me try and <laughs> get better. Yeah, because they'll just beat the right. shit out of you before you yeah, have the opportunity it, to learn anything. Yeah. It I've feels like trying to get into the NBA or something. <laughs> where it's like there's just now, like, yeah, today, like right this it's Dave. Yeah, was like, yeah, this let's sounds like fun. It. Like, it's impossible. It's LeBron, impossible. back off. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> Quit it. Dave's trying to go between his legs. <laughs> like, that's his goal for the day. Stop questioning my sexuality. Jeez, <laughs> LeBron. It's Larry Bird that's doing that, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I See, that's what's weird is I can't tell if it's, like, if I enjoy this game because I came in fairly soon after it was launched, like in July, or or if this is actually... Um, a little bit more accessible of the genre, which I think Blizzard was trying to do, but I, I don't know like if, if I would feel the same about this game if I came into it three or four years um, after the community has already started. But um, it is, I, I feel, extremely easy to learn and pick up. It's extremely accessible, especially if you know um, or, or are familiar with a lot of the Blizzard properties, then you have a little bit more of a uh, um, comfortable feeling with the guys and, and characters you're playing with. Um, but but yeah, I think it's uh, it was a lot of fun just picking it up and and Dave, you introduced this to me before I even knew what a MOBA was or had ever played one and didn't know anything about them other than they'd been you know darling of the esports circuit. But that's about it. But um, no, it's it's I've been legitimately impressed with the a free game essentially because you I mean you don't have to spend a single dollar on this game. It's, right. it's free. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit. How they do it, I think, is interesting. Um, they put heroes on each week. They put it's is it seven heroes, Phil? I think it's seven. There's seven. You have to unlock to get to seven. You start out with just five if you're just starting the game up, but you can get up to seven if you play enough and level yeah. yourself up. But yeah, they put seven characters on free rotation each week. So if you started this game today uh, and decided to play, um, you can download it for free. Log in to your Battle.net account, and you'll have seven heroes that you can play as. Um, and next week, that'll be seven completely different heroes. So the incentive there is they, they want you to try a hero for free and not want to miss playing that hero next week when they're not free. Um, and you can buy that hero with in-game gold or or U.S. dollar, uh, which is very similar to the, the Hearthstone model. Yeah. Um, and it does get into this weird area where it's like they've got, they've got four tiers. There's 10,000 gold characters, 7,000, 4,000, and 2,000. And it does get into this weird math area where 10,000 gold characters become cheaper if you buy them with, with real money. But um, still, it's it's ten dollars to buy one character that costs ten thousand dollar ten thousand gold, and there's you know there's a roster of forty three on there, so it's you cannot buy every single character with money unless you're spending well over a hundred dollars or more. So oh yeah, like uh, it, to buy everything would be uh, a crazy amount. That's that's actually at the end of the show. It's it's since we can't do how much does this game cost on on Amazon. <laughs> Or um, eBay, I have how much would this cost if you bought face value for every single character? So. Awesome. I look forward to it. Uh, yeah. I look forward to being thoroughly depressed by the answer. <laughs> and I didn't include any like skins or mounts, which also cost. I, I don't think you can actually unlock those with gold. I think those are only uh, US dollars. Yeah. Ah, horse yeah. armor. Fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. people pay for it. Shandra paid for it. I think when she first signed on and started playing as Zagara, one of the heroes, she didn't like her main um, character, but liked the one of the skins for it and just bought it and, and doesn't regret it. I mean, she's, yep. she's kind of of the same model as Dave, whereas if you release a good enough product for free, like I'm, you, you guys are willing to put money into it um, because, you know, they made a good product. It's not, it's not a freemium game. I, on the other hand, 
am going to try and milk as much as I can without spending a single cent because I'm kind of a bastard like that. But um, I think that's completely acceptable. Like, yeah. I mean, I because well, they wouldn't that, put it out. Yeah, there. that's the, that's the risk that they take, and they're honestly fill their banking on you eventually buying something. Yeah, and let me tell you from like personal experience, when you buy something, now all of a sudden it's like. Oh, okay. The dam has broken. Yeah, the world didn't end. I bought I bought a character that was on sale for money, and the world didn't end. Yeah, right, what keeps well, me I'll just going and do this again? What keeps me going good, and, yeah. and and try and not buying is that they give you just enough gold uh, while you play, and it starts out like when you're first playing and you're first getting started, they're just raining gold down on you. Uh, everything you do gets you like a level up, which gets you more money. Um, but the more you play, the longer you play, the longer in between levels, the longer in between payoffs for gold. So that, that gold train starts kind of running out and you have to really pick and choose which characters you're going to spend your gold on. But they give it to you and just enough that like, I could probably afford to buy a new character every week and a half to two weeks, which is enough time for me to like pick a character I like, play it, get to know it, get tired of it, and want to play a new one. And by that time, I have enough gold, so I can just kind of keep slowly expanding my roster without ever paying a dime for it. Right. And I know there are some players who um, specifically buy new heroes when they come out. Um, they, they've been doing like a new hero, like every five weeks or something like that. So I know there are players out there who, when a new hero comes out, they purchase that hero with gold and then they just play until they have enough gold to buy the next hero that comes out. Um, so it is possible to do that. Um, I don't have the time to do that. Um, No. And they've got it set up. So when a new hero comes out, it is um, more expensive the first week that it's out. Mm. So they've really, like, they've really put a lot of thought into the pricing structure for good, yeah. or, for good or bad, whichever way. Um, but it's kind of also kind of weird because it's like having played Final Fantasy XI and having played World of Warcraft and Ultima Online. Like, I've I've never felt so trained to to microtransactions as I am right now. And like with DLC and everything, it never, Phil, I know you feel differently than I do, Mm -hmm. but like I'm to the point now where it's all of a sudden, it's not that big a deal to me. And I do feel like this is the game that made me feel that way. Um, Because like in Hearthstone, for example, I really liked that game. And then the expansions came out and I was like, eh, I'm not going to buy those cards. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, the thing with me is that, like, if they released a $60 version that had, like, all the characters unlocked, and, and even without, like, any of the horse armor or, or any of that shit, but just, like, if you gave me a, a AAA-priced game for 60 bucks that had all the characters unlocked, I would absolutely buy it. This is This is a good enough game that would do that, but... They don't have that available. I think you can buy them, like, go to a, go to a store, and you can get, like... Here's the storm off the shelf from the yes. computer game section, but it's just um, you know a, a battle net key that gets you four or six heroes, like a starter pack for you know thirty or forty bucks. So, yeah, I think they realize that this is has a lot more earning potential than a than a sixty dollar box. Yeah. Oh, well, that that Warcraft uh, money train is is starting to, and this is the second time I've used the term money train, which I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Warcraft is is um. You're not getting as many subscribers. They got to keep up their their profits. So I can totally understand that. Let me ask you this. Um, so you guys, <clears throat> you play multiplayer, correct? Uh, yes. As in uh, everyone on a team. How many per team? Five per team. Five per team. And do you each play as individual heroes? Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. So you're all, you're, you all have to be different heroes. You can play the same heroes. We have to be different. Okay. Yep. So team composition is kind of like this meta game where there are certain groups of five heroes that work a lot better than five others. So it's no different from any other RPG where you have different classes and right. Yeah. A class a class of all five healers is going to get you know, right. destroyed. Right. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, you don't want to put together a group of five white mages. Well, that's a really interesting way to look at it in a way that I had not uh, sort of thought about, but when you're thinking of it as um for it to kind of work in my brain, the way that it would work is as a RPG simulator almost, because you are 
only playing as one character out of that group. You are only managing that one individual person. And it's not a situation where like, uh, you know, in world of Warcraft where you have a 20 man raid, which is like way too big for me to sort of like think about. Yeah. Yeah. But with a five person team that feels closer to the sort of typical JRPG standard. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's, more interesting to me. Yeah. And that's a good way to think about it because, um, there are each hero is divided into their assigned a specific class. Like there's a support class. Uh, these are your healers. Uh, these are your characters that can give other heroes shields. Uh, there's a, uh, an assassin class, which is strictly damage dealers. Uh, there's a warrior class, which is like your tanks, um, that are going to take a lot of damage, um, and kind of lead the front line, but they're not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. And then there's a specialist class, which is um, usually they're just built around sieging. So like these are the characters that can like solo down towers and gates and keeps and that kind of stuff. Uh, Phil does a you do really well in the specialist class, I think, with Asmodan. Yeah, and, and Sergeant Hammer both they are both specialists, um, and yeah, that's it's it is very very easy to just kind of sit there in a in, on a lane and just pick off a use a hero that just is designed to to destroy the other team's uh, lane. So, and everyone feels different amounts of comfort with with who they're playing. Um, like the healers, I I am so terrible with them, and I want to be good, but I just I I don't know if I just don't have the head to to be a support. Uh, person, I like to be there um, in the thick of things, dealing out damage and um, killing people or or killing keeps. Um, Dave, I know you're kind of the opposite. You like to, you are very very good with the healer class, and that's kind of what you, at least when I think of uh, the characters you're good with, that's that's kind of what you are. I love the yep. support class. Let me ask you guys that to What are your sort of like go to characters, and what do they do? So I love Rhaegar. Rhaegar's from Warcraft. He's a shaman. Um, and he in, in Heroes of the Storm, he's a support class. He's a healer. And the reason I like him is because um, he – this is my favorite thing about him. Most characters mount up. So whenever you want to go fast, when you have to cover ground, um, you hit the Z button. Like regulators. Like mount up. <laughs> Thank you. Y- yes. You um, you hit Z and this little timer goes by and it takes like maybe two seconds and then you get on your horse. So Rhaegar, you hit Z and he just turns into a, a spirit wolf. Um, and so it's very, it's really, really fast. And that is my favorite thing about this character because I can, I can essentially just troll the other team to no end because I can, as Rhaegar, run in as a wolf heal everybody and then now all of a sudden the other team is like we got to kill that healer and so they'll come after me uh and then i can just pop right back as a wolf and and run away um and it's i have the most fun when i try to get somebody to follow me it reminds me of final fantasy 11 where you've got a camp and then one guy goes out Mm -hmm. and pulls an enemy that's one of my favorite things to do is rhaegars go out as a wolf get someone's attention and then just pull them back to a group of of my team so that they can just they can gank them. When you die, are you done for the encounter? So that's a great question. When you die, um, you go back to your base. Uh, Phil calls it the penalty box, and I love that Phil because that's I mean it it feels horrible to be when you're dead because it's like you can see everything that's happening and you, and I'm always like, Oh man, I I could, if I were there, I could be helping. Um, but you wait for a timer and after a certain number of seconds, you come back in the game. But the longer is the more you die, the longer the penalty is. It's not the more you die. It's the further into the match it is. So so if like late, late game, when you're like 20 minutes in, you're sitting out more than a full minute. Yeah. And, which is just brutal. If you die in the first, you know, a couple of minutes of the game, you're, I think you, it's 10 seconds. Yeah, maybe it's like you, no time. They get you right back in there, but yeah, the later it is and the later it is, the more like, obviously you're closer to, to winning it and the more your absence is, is felt. So it's, it's awful. If you're on a, if you're on a team and you're just dying left and right, you're feeling like you are the sole reason why this team is losing. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. And that's that's usually like um, that timer is also really important. That respawn timer, because that's usually in game when you know, okay, this is where we push. We push hard because four of their guys are dead, and it's going to take them a full minute to spawn. Well, in the same way that you have to push the advantage in hockey if someone is in the penalty box. You know, mm-hmm. four on five is just you're at a disadvantage period, so you have to make sure you score when, when they are on the right. penalty. Because it's going to yeah. be – that's your time to take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, Phil, I know we, we talked about you like in Siege. Is that is that your preferred class? I think so. I kind of go back and forth between Siege and, and Assassin. I mean, Hammer is by far my my – character I'm most effective with and she I guess is I don't know if they made if they created her character specifically for this but she's from the Starcraft universe she's right. in she's a siege tank your, right your, your, yeah your standard Starcraft siege tank which you can roll around in tank form and just shoot people or you can siege up and just like in Starcraft your your attack power is really high and your distance to attack is really high but you lose a bunch of mobility but she's the one character who can sit outside of the range of the keep and the towers, which normally one on one against a tower, you're going to get fucked up pretty bad. Right. Know? But she can sit outside their threat range and just bombard them and just take down an entire lane all to herself and do really, really well. Whereas other characters are specifically designed to uh, pair up with others. She's designed to kind of be on her own. Be so well. Which matters a lot because you have five characters on a team and there's either two or three lanes so there's always going to be an imbalance one lane is going to have two one lane is going to have one and part of the the in-game strategy is matching up with your opponents if they have two people at the top lane you you kind of want to put two people up there to defend against that or do you team up and just form one big ball of five and try and push one heavy lane which is a tactic that works yeah. but that that means you are leaving two lanes undefended that your your opponents can go after. Right. So, and it's usually a late game tactic because um, we haven't really talked about experience, but there's there are experience points in this game. Um, whenever you kill an enemy hero or an enemy minion, uh, which is essentially just um, an NPC soldier, they come out in waves, and if so. If you just leave a lane completely alone, what will happen eventually is their minions will build up and start taking down your towers. So it's a it's a device to get you to be in every lane uh, and manage the damage there. So um, what's what's interesting is I completely lost my train of thought. Um <laughs> What the, what the hell was I even talking about before I was talking about the minions? Oh, the experience points. So when you kill heroes or, exper- or uh, minions, you gain experience points, and your individual hero that you're playing levels up. Uh, it's a shared pool. So if um, your team has an experience point pool, and you gain levels, uh, you all gain a level at the same time. And as you gain levels, uh, abilities unlock for every hero that is on your team. Uh, and it's individual to those heroes. So it, what the way it breaks down is at level 10, everyone gets what's called their ultimate ability. And this is the most powerful ability that every hero is going to have. So uh, the, the early game is a race to 10. And once everyone, once you're to 10 and you have your ultimate, the, the game changes. And now all of a sudden you want to push team fights because you have, if you're 10 and your opponent is level 8, You've got a huge advantage on them, so it's best to hunt them down uh, and press a team fight so that you can, because you're going to have a huge advantage, you can wipe them, and if you do, and when you do, then you start, you enter the late game, and you start pushing, uh, trying to go for the core. And it really has this snowball effect of once one team kind of gets on top, they can just keep getting better and better because they're a higher level, so they can do more damage, kill you faster. When they kill you, they get more experience and get a higher level, and it just kind of snowballs on itself. And um, certainly when when Dave and I and uh, Drew and everyone else has has played against actual live competition, <laughs> four, <laughs> four out of five times, that's what happens to us. We yeah. just get smoked, and it's it's not even funny. It's just... yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's why we stick to AI. Yeah, that's one of my biggest complaints about the game. I do yeah. have I do have a complaint about the game. I love this I've game. I've got several. Yeah. But my biggest complaint about it is we normally play versus AI. And 
what has happened is we've gotten really, really good at playing against AI. We know how to beat AI, um, even at the highest, the highest difficulty. It's yeah. usually not a problem unless we put together just this really, really weird composition. Mm-hmm. Um, but so we start to get, I personally start to get bored with that because it's just win, 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 win. Okay. It starts to feel like grinding. Um, yeah. So I want to dip my toe into uh, playing with against other players, and that's called quick match. Um, and every time I go into a quick match, I am reminded instantly that playing AI matches has not prepared me at all, like no. even like one percent to play against other players, because the dynamic is completely different. Because players act completely different than AI does. Uh, and then I, you know, start to realize, Oh, I cannot predict what they're going <laughs> to do because, uh, they're human beings. They're not, they're not AI. They're not going to make the, the perfect strategic decisions, which even, yeah. even if they're optimal decisions, if you know, those are the decisions that they're going to make, you can, you can counter that. And I mean, pretty much my, the crux of my strategy in game is that, I know what the AI is going to do in any given situation, so I can kind of prepare in advance for that. Whereas, if I'm going up against other people, I'm fucked from the immediate immediately because I'm I'm in that mindset of like if I do this, then the characters will do this, but they don't. So like they kill me. Yeah. <laughs> the the AI won't do it. I can sit there as a siege tank and just pick them off, and they won't come and rush me and try and kill me. They'll try and back away from my range, but other human beings will just decide, wait a minute, that tank can't move. So right. I'm going to get, I'm going to get really close to it and kill it. We'll and it's not going to go it. anywhere. Yeah. And that's, yeah. So, <laughs> so I think honestly, I think it boils down to an amount of practice in, in quick match to get good at it. That I'm not sure that I'm willing to commit to because like, it's, it's a lot of losing. It is a it's lot very, of losing. It's very Starcraft in that you, you know you go in and play against a other competition and you just realize how abysmally terrible know, you are at the game. Yeah, and that's that is a shitty feeling because that's how I felt in Warcraft. And you Three, spent money to be this bad. Starcraft. So. <laughs> I have uh, not spent a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have spent money to be this bad, Tyler. You uh, spent my money. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I I don't know. I just don't feel like I can put the time in to, to quick match to get good at it. And that's p- part of my problem is that I know when you play like in the ranked matches, I think they have a system that matches you up against people of similar abilities. But when you're just doing the quick match, it just it randomly matches you up with whoever has decided to do a quick match at the same time as you do. So you're not necessarily matched up against people of similar skill level, which if there was an amateur ranking level that I could play against someone who was as bad as me at the game and have like a 50-50 chance at winning on quick match, I, that would be a lot more enticing to me. But yeah. mm, as okay. it is, I could be going up against you know experts or I could be going up against people that haven't played the game. But for the most part, they're experts who I'm, I'm going up against, I feel like. And it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a detriment is losing every single time you go out there and play. They do have a matchmaking ranking. Um, it's hidden, so you never see it. You never know what your ranking is mm. um, when you're playing quick match. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, and it does. So you're getting the shit kicked out of you by appropriately leveled people. Well, see, that's, that's 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 the thing is you have to play enough to get yeah. kind of where you belong. Uh, yeah. Where I belong is near the bottom. Um, yes. And it's I feel like I haven't hit that yet because what they what they try to do is they take everybody's win loss ratio and they want to pitch you against someone who you do have a fifty percent chance of winning. But the problem is you can't take all the factors into play. It's impossible to like, because everyone's going to have a different team composition. Some people are going to be playing in a group of three with two add-on, just two randos. Some people are going to be playing with a solid five uh, people on voice chat. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of factors in it that I feel like influence that, uh, that matchmaking ranking. And, and definitely yeah, the more... Me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, yeah, this is not something, like something I would dig at all. <laughs> yeah, I, and I even like, even just kind of looking at you, like, oh, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, Tyler is not, not digging this one iota. Does, does, <laughs> does, does that like I'm gonna like it? Is he, Can is you he make asleep your own yet? weapons? No. He looks pretty sleepy. <laughs> I'm all right. 
I have to have Lunesta or guys tell me about Heroes of the Storm <laughs> and, I, and I fall asleep. Well, we'll have this podcast, Tyler. Anytime you want to get to sleep, yeah. you can just play it. <laughs> I'll just call you, Dave, tell me about Heroes of the Storm. All right. Yes, I will. <laughs> and this is, I mean, it's an over the head view combat. Like Awesome Knots is a 2D side scroller. Oh, really? Yeah. No, yeah. This is this is overhead. Like think Warcraft 3 okay. or StarCraft. It's it's that kind of view angle. Man, I can't even That sounds kind of cool to mm-hmm. do this in 2D side scroller. Yeah. And that's that's why I asked if like the more you died the longer your penalty was cuz that's how it is there. So like uh, if you suck, you'll be sending out like long amounts of time. Okay. And the closer you get to that enemy's what you, you know, their power power station that you're trying to get to like then they're covered up in turrets that will kill you like in two seconds. Yeah. And then you're there for like 30 seconds. And then, yeah. So it, it balances out. The closer you get, the more likely you are to die. Gotcha. Well, in this game, there, the penalty of dying is you get, when a hero dies, they uh, bestow on the opposing team a, a big amount of experience. So yeah. it's, it's important not to die. There's a, a huge benefit to not dying and that is like like right out the gate it's the worst when like two or three heroes on your team die at the beginning it's the opposing team has like already they're like oh we're already level two <laughs> so. can you surrender no you can just stop and not do anything okay you, but you no can. you can't and if you quit the game and like completely like i've done this before where i've you know maureen's called me away or something and i've had to stop playing um if you log back in it will log you into the same match you were playing. It's just that an AI has taken over your character while you were gone. So, yeah, there literally is no way to to actually stop the match once it started, which I hear is yeah. different from... Is that different from League of Legends or Dota? Is that, like, you can you can give up in those games, but not in this one? It's a good question. I'm not qualified to answer it. Someone okay. get on that. I know Sam plays League of Legends, so let's ask him. So if you... Like, pull the plug on your internet. Like, I would do very often in Final Fantasy XI. Like, this party is awful, and yeah. I don't yeah. feel like talking to them to get out of it and just pull the plug. And my character disconnects, and they have to sort it out, whatever. So you do that here, then an AI just takes over. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And you're kind of put on a shit list, because what will happen is you'll log back in, and it'll say, not the first time, but if, it's, if it happens several times, you'll get your account will be flagged. You'll be flagged as a lever. And mm-hmm. what that means is they're going to team you up. They're going to pit you against other levers. So you're put into this really weird bracket that you don't really want to be in because it's like no one knows what's going to happen. Like this is this is the fucking You're talking about unpredictable. <laughs> right. <laughs> so weird shit's going to happen. We're kind of in that boat right now because... Um, I'm glad you didn't play this in Lexington then because you'd be a lever all the time. I couldn't play it, yeah, because my yeah. internet was so bad. Yeah, you're screwed if your internet connection n- is not good. Yeah. Hey, all fleek, don't play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we're kind of on the... Anytime we play with Time Lord uh, Josh Edwards, uh, he, uh, he had to leave a game, so like he's flagged. So what sucks is like when we group up with him to play, the group is flagged. So, and, uh, and that, that equates to, if we want to do a quick match, we have to wait a really long time to get into a quick match with other, levers. with other levers. Yeah. A little fucking Timmy in Concord or something. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I dare you know, you know, Concord of that Timmy kid. Uh, I was like Galen doing the Rick impression the other day. It's like no one wanted to jump in. <laughs> oh, man. I think yeah. one of the things that's, that's neat about it, and they've really only kind of done tip of the iceberg, is that with all their, you know, we, Dave mentioned that the, you know, they, have, they pull from the three mm. primary franchises, but they don't, the Wikipedia didn't mention Lost Vikings, which right. of course is a, a Blizzard property, but that is one of the heroes that they have created for it, and it's it's like fairly that. unique yeah, in like that, that you actually control three heroes at once, and they all you can kind of split them up or bring them together into one unit. I think they're all like a little bit weaker in comparison, but together they're they're very strong. But it's an interesting dynamic, and it shows that they are willing to pull from old uh, Blizzard 
franchises and properties that they used to have on the Super Nintendo let or me, let like me know Black when Kyle Blackthorn yeah I've lobbied for Kyle Blackthorn oh god every, yes every time they announce a new hero I'm on Twitter saying that's great where's Kyle Blackthorn though yeah so so far we got nothing well and I looked up like they're the old Blizzard properties and there's not much like they used to do like Battle Chess or yeah. Lord of the Rings Volume what? One or Death and Return of Superman or just like <laughs> <laughs> so they could recreate a rook character, I they suppose. Were the people behind Battle Chess. Battle Chess Two is what I oh, I read. Boogaloo. Yeah. Uh, I or think rock, rock, rock and, and roll, roll racing. racing. Yes, <laughs> I think rock and roll racing would be great. I want to play as one of the one of the cars from Rock and Roll Racing. That would be an obvious mount that you could turn into, and you could actually shoot from your mount that way. Drop drop missiles and no, nope. I stuff. want it as a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Just want a car as a hero. Just want a car as a hero, yep. But the problem with Kyle Blackthorne is he would be the first, like, 20,000 gold character. Because he's so metal. Yeah, because it's <laughs> just, you know, and he just kills everything on site. <laughs> he's worth too it. good. He'd have a mechanic where he could hide in the shadows. I think they're going to do Get it. that magic shotgun. I really do think that they're going to do it. Yeah. Because they're, yeah. they're like 40-some odd. Well, they're going to run out. They have announced that they have a list of 200 characters. Like, they're they're gunning for League of Legends. Wow. Like, they have got 200 characters in mind. And I feel like at some point they're going to be like... They have to. 199 or 200 is probably going to be Kyle Blackthorne. Because, yeah. like, we are running out of ideas here, people. Yeah. Well, I, from that episode, didn't, didn't you run into at least online or while researching, there is there is a dedicated Blackthorn fan base out there that legitimately remembers the game with with reverence and would really, really want that. Whereas we're kind of like, okay, it's kind of a shitty game, but that'd be pretty sweet to get this metal-ass character in there to play <laughs> as. But I think that there actually is a group of people who would enjoy that because they like the game Blackthorn. And, and it might come sooner than you think is what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, and it's also I, one of those ways to like be more inclusive. And I feel like the thing with Blackthorn, though, is that uh, to a certain extent, that has to be... Because I imagine that they have probably already came out with... <clears throat> like, is there anyone that they have released so far that has... Or, or have not released that you would expect them to? Like... Arthas, I imagine, is probably in the game. Yep, Kerrigan right. is probably in the game. Yes. All of yeah. these like sort of big name characters are probably already there. The big pop that they have that they can hold back on is Blackthorn, you guys, which would at least get sort of like an ironic, like, oh hey, all right, that's interesting. Right. As opposed to, you know, just another fucking character from World of Warcraft or whatever. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that their big thing is like when Overwatch comes out, which is mm -hmm. their first person shooter, I think they're gonna pull heavily from, yeah. from Overwatch as well, which I think I'm not I, that's like a wait and see kind of thing. Cause I'm not sure how I feel about that right now because it's like, oh well, you're just kinda like double dipping. Um yeah. and especially if they do the full roster, which I hope that they don't do because <laughs> they just yeah. make an they make another they make one RPG with seventy characters. And yeah. just every <laughs> single character is in Hero of the Storm. <laughs> It's just called The Storm. <laughs> well, because they definitely use it as a way to like highlight a new game. So I guess when Reaper of the Souls came out, or Reaper of Souls came out, didn't they They did a give, Diablo. I guess, it, no, it was a new season of Diablo 3 that if you played during that season, you would get the Diablo character for free. And with um, uh, Legacy of the Void coming out next month, if you have pre-ordered it, you get the new Artanis hero, which is just... It hasn't been released yet unless you have that pre-order. And right. so they're kind of using that as a means to, to you know, highlight one game, get you to dr draw towards the new StarCraft game while still playing this. So it's it's definitely something that they're using to It's a cross-market vehicle. Yeah. 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 Hey, Dave. Yes. Look at the timer here. You guys and, uh, sufficiently bored? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> let's look at the timer and it's yeah. like, I've had a good time today. Yeah. It's been a podcast. Right. We're going to finish this, and then Tyrone and I are going to do our completely separate one about an individual episode of The Simpsons or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it is Todd Pog, so does that mean, Tyler, you got the next one? It just depends. We may flip a coin. We may just, like, there's a game I really want to do, and Dave is not interested or does not have time. 
you know, you know, you know I'm depends. on board for Zelda 2 if and when it happens. I do want to do Zelda 2. There you go. That sounds like a game that I... Zelda 2, I always feel like I need to sit down and like give it a fair shake. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want to. <laughs> so. and, you, and you have to use a guide. You just have to, or you're really just not going to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is yeah, too, it is too to obtuse yeah, that that sounds sounds to just sit to down me. and play. Any, I, I, anytime you need to have a fucking book to play a game and it's not a fucking PC game released in 1989, <laughs> and the only reason that you have that book is so that you can look something up and log on because that was how... The piracy protection. Yeah, exactly. I know, Leisure Suit Larry. I Exa- got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Because I sat down and I tried playing it straight and it was just like, oh, okay, no, I can't... I, None of these like things are labeled. I don't know. Like, is this the first dungeon? Am I in level one? Do I, I don't know. You know. So, uh, I mean, I can imagine like back in the day, if you had tons of time and a book you wanted to fill in yourself and talk to other people, you could have done it. But like nowadays, you you just as an adult, you need a guide. Yeah. To to do it at all. I mean, it's still it's challenging, and even if you know where all the levels are, you know. It's still challenging and fun to play. It's just good to know where to go. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. And I want to play sort of like blue sky with you guys. If you guys could take any character from any sort of like popular gaming culture and toss them into Heroes of the Storm, who would they be and what would their abilities be? Uh, that's a big question. Yeah, it's a fucking big that's question. A really it's big, a big question. fucking podcast, man. Well, it's, <laughs> it's funny because I, f- I feel like we've talked about this not from gaming, but what can you take outside of the the realm of gaming and turning into a MOBA like a, you know, all the presidents and ex presidents, all <laughs> yeah. the cast of Seinfeld and The Simpsons, <laughs> and and class them as like I would I would pay a lot of money to have a Seinfeld MOBA. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. I think Kramer would be a he'd be a specialist. <laughs> tearing down doors yeah but i was you know i was just looking at it and i was like well you know i mean this is it feels like this is blizzard's version of smash Smash brothers Brothers. yeah exactly yeah um and i was looking at the characters and it was like oh well these are all really well designed really interesting it would be interesting to see something that was like you know a nintendo character that was done in that sort of design and so I guess that that's my question is like, who would that be? I have my answer. All right. I want to hear it. Uh, it is Earthworm Jim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I can actually see Earthworm Jim fitting in to the game some weird way uh, because I feel like he's got um, enough weapons where he would have enough abilities in the game. Uh, he wouldn't be limited to just like punch and stuff like that. Like yeah. He's got the, the different guns. Uh, and of course, uh, the, uh, the head whip. The head whip's probably yeah. going to be his ultimate yeah. ability. Uh, That's good and it's good stun. Yeah, it's going to stun. Exactly. See, I feel like the ultimate would be dropping a refrigerator or a cow on something. <laughs> a cow, yeah, that's probably <laughs> that's probably the ultimate. You're right. I think, so they have some characters that, like I mentioned, Lost Vikings, you can split them, split them up into three. There's another one, uh, Rexar and Misha, his bear, they can split up into two. So I think you can mimic that game mechanic and have them make kids as one player <laughs> character. I love it. You that is go- my answer. You were going down that path, and I was like, ice climbers, <laughs> hammer, no. hammer, hammer. Make no, I want, I want Beetlejuice from the game Beetlejuice. <laughs> you guys have to play. See, I, was, I was hoping you said from any gaming culture, you're like, oh, well, then Tyler and Dave, then as, as characters, <laughs> Tyler can summon the cloud of negativity, and that fills a whole lane <laughs> and makes characters move slowly and take damage from the negativity as they move through. That's good. And then, and then Dave can summon a horrible bathroom and take a shit on it and then pull out his phone horrible and communicate bathroom. with all players and summon them to <laughs> that point no matter where they are. I can't believe I haven't mentioned this. Guys, I've got incredible news. <laughs> yes? We're getting yeah. new bathrooms at, yeah? at work. Oh, and shit. And they are oh, all of a sudden the nicest rooms in the building. <laughs> like, it's been a complete 180. It's like we went from, like, the worst and just, like, leakiest and this like if i could describe a bathroom as tobacco tar uh, that's how i would sure. describe this bathroom now it's like a 40 year old smoker's lung if it was something you sh- could shit in yeah yeah <laughs> you're not you're not wrong now it is like all this like stone tile and like stone wall and it's like okay well clearly we need to have 
meetings in here now and they're huge. <laughs> they went from like a one toilet deal, like in a, a closet, like it was a water closet. <laughs> and now all of a sudden they're like um, half the size of the annex. Your, so, your boss caved believe. pressure from the Tadpog Nation and give you a proper bathroom. So thank you, Tadpog Nation. I, I appreciate it. Question is, Dave, are you so like desensitized to to taking a crap in the awful work bathroom that you, you feel like you're not good enough for the really nice, good one? Nah. No. <laughs> no. No. Not, <laughs> not even a problem. <laughs> you're not like a, a someone in an abusive relationship, just like can't give it up. No. I, no. <laughs> I deserve the bad bath. I deserve hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to my boss and be like, hey, I mean, he does, but. <laughs> can I keep that old linoleum? Are you going to do anything with that? <laughs> So, so Dave, we got a few got a few questions for you. You do, yeah. Okay. Had a, had a good time today. Talked yeah. About, talked about some things. Yeah, we had a podcast. Ed, educated me and Jacob. Not as Jacob many. And I. Not as many buttholes as we usually have. Pretty, pretty, pretty dry. <laughs> pretty, dry <laughs> pretty dry show. Seriously, this is very, very tame. It was pretty dry. Like it's as someone who um, has no experience with Heroes of the Storm. I found it really interesting. Good. Um, I like, and I, I really enjoyed it. I probably won't re-listen to it. I will say that because it was like, I have gleaned all of the information initially. I don't need to like go back and listen for chuckles. Um, but like, that's, I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, but it was, but it's, I'm very glad that this discussion happened because I, you had been talking about Heroes of the Storm and I was, really curious about it. So I'm super glad that I was on for this. I'm glad you now know, and you're not going to play it for the record, right? This, um, this, like, does this sound like a game that is for no, you? Yeah. I no, kinda... no, not in, but not in a moreover, because you guys talk about, um, sort of the competitive aspect and the competitive aspect isn't super interesting to me because I would be, I'm the kind of guy who would be satisfied playing, AI forever. Yeah. You know? Um, and I know that, you know, I would want to continue to play with you, Dave, and you'd be like, let's, let's play actual people. And I'd be like, nah, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to lose. <laughs> I, 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 I hate losing. <laughs> I get it. And there's like, there's some of that in me too. Cause I mean, time Lord Josh Edwards always wants to play to play quick match. That's yeah. like his push. Cause, and it makes sense. He wants to get better. And that's like the way to get better at yeah. it is to actually play with other people. But I'm the guy who's like, I don't know. But also too, like, um, you know, while we were talking about it, I went and I looked at the character list and there's just no one on the character list that makes me be like, Oh shit. I can't wait to play as blank. Yeah. You know, I'm also a blizzard fanboy. Like I, I love sure. blizzard. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And I think it has a lot to do with why this is the, this is the MOBA that I decided to play. And I think, well, and I, that was sort of why I asked that question because I thought about it and was like, you know, if it was the exact same game, but set up like smash brothers where it was Nintendo characters where it, you could pick Samus or Mario or sure. Little Mac. Um, that suddenly, or even expanding it, expanding it further, if it was Capcom or something like that, yeah. um, like that suddenly is more interesting to me uh, because my my knowledge of Blizzard is just so limited. And I like I know Diablo and I know um, Arthas and I know Kerrigan, but you go beyond that and I don't have a connection to any of the characters. Yeah. So it, Blizzard for me is just Diablo. Like, Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. It's all that I... I played Warcraft 2 forever ago. Yeah. One time through, and I cheated. So, like, <laughs> none of their properties or anything that's ever, like... I didn't play World of Warcraft. I played, like, 10 minutes of Hearthstone. Like, none of their properties, like, are in my head at all, what? except Diablo 2 and 3. And I feel the same way, uh, except that I played through a significant portion of War of Warcraft 3 and got really invested in Arthas's story and the second you had to switch off of being the human, a human yeah. I wasn't interested anymore. So it, like it it just sort of lost me, which is why when I played World of Warcraft, I played as undead. Um because that was the path and that was the hero that I still identified with. So yeah, I just they don't have for me the sort of in that would sure sort of entice me into playing. I it. get it. It's like if I didn't, I 
as good a game as I think Smash Brothers is, I feel like that would be a hard sell if I didn't enjoy Nintendo's properties. Right. Absolutely. Well, it's, you know, how the fucking um, Sony uh, yeah. fighter has not taken off in the same way. Individually, you can take, you know, a handful of those characters and they're very interesting. You can bring me, um, you can bring me Kratos and Nathan Drake and a big daddy and I'm, and Parappa and I'm interested, <laughs> but when you try and extrapolate it to a 30 person roster or something like that, yeah. the fall off is severe. I think that game really suffered from the Simpsons did it kind of thing yeah, where it's like oh well this is smash brothers but sony okay <laughs> yeah i mean all right whatever i guess that's <laughs> when i was looking at Vita games why is this one 12 dollars <laughs> oh it was 12 dollars <laughs> yeah it was super cheap last time i looked yeah i didn't even i don't even know that this game exists yeah so but it, it, and it makes me feel like if heroes of the storm was like hey we're doing this also the next hero that we've announced is a big daddy from Bioshock. Bow, 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 bow. I'd be like, all right, okay, yeah. this is suddenly something I'm very interested in. What if it was Crash Bandicoot? Or is that already in the Sony game? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was Paperboy from Paperboy? Paper Boy. <laughs> oh, man. What's his ultimate? The dog comes out. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. Attacks people. Uh, what if it was the fucking, uh, the abominable snowman from Ski Free? <laughs> 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 Always wins. So, do you guys have any achievements for things that you do in uh, Heroes of the Storm? Um, I, so, yeah, Dave. I assume you didn't, but no, I, I, God, no. <laughs> I came with three. I came with three. Good. So, the first achievement I have is is called Daddy Warbucks, which you earn when you purchase every hero mount and skin in the game with actual money, Ooh. which is. Uh, Probably gonna be a thousand dollars. I think it's I, I gonna be know. more, oh. dude. I think it's gonna be more than a thousand dollars. Because the quiz I have for you guys, the <laughs> how much does this cost on on Battle.net is just <laughs> just the heroes and not the uh, not the other accoutrements. But um, the opposite of that is Ebenezer Scrooge, which you earn that achievement from purchasing every hero using in-game currency only. And the last one I have is called Divorce Papers, which is. You level every character up to twenty, which, with a roster of forty three, and I, what's what's the highest character level you've gotten one of yours up to, Dave? I know you've played a lot more than me. Nine, which nine. is not very high, because uh, I kind of spread it out. I played as Muradin until nine. I played as Abathur until nine. Um, Rhaegar until nine, and then I just I don't know that push to ten. It takes so much experience to get a character past nine. I feel like that I just kind of. Yeah. I just and knowing that that's that's nine. halfway there, yeah. Like, Your subconscious would, is wanting you to play nine nine nine. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cle- clearly to me, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I came up with one, and that my achievement would be electric sheep. And in order to unlock electric sheep, you have to um, play on expert level, play against expert level AI with four AI teammates, and you have to win. Oh, okay. which is hard to do yeah. because AI on your team always seems to be not quite as good as AI yeah. on the enemy team. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but like it always seems that way. Mm. So Dave, Dave and Phil, mm-hmm. if, if you had to give Heroes of the Storm a beard, yeah, what kind of beard would you give it? God, this is so, this is, I feel like I'm watching history right now. <laughs> See, this I did not come prepared for. I've got so. one. Good I one. Um, I would give this game a salty, brine encrusted, skeletal pirate beard. Is what okay. I would give it. Okay. Um, and you know the kind of beard where it's if you're used to it. If you're into pirates, <laughs> you're probably gonna <laughs> like the beard. But if you're not into pirates, you probably you're probably gonna need okay. to find another okay. beard. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I get that because I feel like that 100% about this whole pirate culture thing. Like, I fucking hate it and I don't understand it, but people are so nuts about pirates. Is it a thing still? Is pirate, like, is I that still, still a thing? Feel, I still hear whenever it comes up every year, like, talk like a pirate day or just like a pirate day or 
Because whenever I hear that, I'm like, awesome. Is it 2006? Because I feel like that's when it peaked. <laughs> Is the housing crisis about to start all over again? Because that's where I feel like we're going. <laughs> Fucking pirates. <laughs> I know what we're in store for. I think that was one of the first Facebook games was the Pirates versus Ninjas. Yeah, thing, I remember which, that. Maybe, maybe future episode. Eventually list. <laughs> <laughs> the, to- the next Todd Pog. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to give this game a pair of glasses... What kind of glasses would you give it? Phil, you want to take this one, or you, do I need to handle this one? I mean, it's not going to be good, but... <laughs> that's, hey, that's... Perfect. That's fine. I don't let that stop me, so go do, ahead. Do, if you could do like some kind of windshield, that would be great. How about a visor? Because I, I'm tr- looking through the roster, and I, you know what? No one in you know, the Warcraft universe wears spectacles or anything like that, but Lieutenant Morales who just came out, she has a, a drop-down visor, and I think I would give it one Lieutenant Morales visor. What I don't it, know why. The what glassy is she, but, um, eyes of a murloc. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I can't tie it together the way Dave just did with the beard, but... I barely did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Phil, is it time for your quiz? Yeah, I mean, you, you guys... Whoa. Well, day a quiz. I, you you know what the quiz is. I've, I've said it several times, Jacob. But. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. Well, that's not a quiz. That's a qu- yeah. that's a question. <laughs> it's a question. It's an individual so question. Tyler said he asked it three them. times though. <laughs> but um, yeah, there are forty three characters on this list, ranging from between two dollars to ten dollars or more. So, um, give me your guys' best best guess as to how much it would cost to purchase every single hero on here outside of a bundle, not in a bundle, okay. um, which we didn't talk about, but that's a thing. Um, how much cards. would it cost if you bought each one individually? Price is right style, without okay. going over. I'm actually trying to do math right now. Tyrone, it's not working $290. Out. Dave? I'm going to say just for heroes. It's just for heroes? Yeah. Just for heroes. No mounts, no skins, no nothing. I'm going to say, God, Tyler, what did you say? 290 I'm going to go like, it's got to be in like the $400 range. It has to be because like there's so many $10 heroes. I don't know. I'm probably over. I'm probably over. I'm going to go 400 though. 199 Jacob, 199 Yeah. All right. I have no concept, but that feels good to me. <laughs> you did better than Dave, I'll tell you that. Ah! But that makes me feel a little better that I can't actually spend $400 on the game. Yeah. The, Yet. The, yeah. Actual retail price of every single character on HOTS at the time of this recording is three hundred and fifty four dollars and fifty seven cents. Jesus. So I was close. I just Tyler <laughs> Tyler takes yeah. the prize. Yeah. So yeah, Jesus. if you want to play every single character, you can just plop down that, you know, new TV money and uh get yourself the entire game. You don't have to do that though, Phil. <laughs> I- I think I've got like 15 characters purchased. That's almost half. I think. So but while subscriptions are going down, you got to help Blizzard out. <laughs> just just pay the full price out of the gate. God damn. And I hope you love it. I think I've got half the roster, and I think that I've probably paid 90 bucks, probably $90. Uh, but I also bought the retail box. Damn. So that's a big chunk of it. Yeah. I buy, I buy like anytime a ten dollar hero pops up for sale because they do like fifty percent off kind of deals. It's yeah. one of those things where it's like, okay, I'll pick this up. Um, yeah, it's been pretty. It's I've only bought one character at full price for um, actual money, and that was Kalthos. And I did because I did not want to wait for him to go on sale. I of played, course, I played him in a free week, and it was the next week. It was like. Got to buy him. And actually, I bought him with... Uh, he was half of the gift card you got me for my birthday, Tyler. Yeah. So, thank you. I'm glad glad <laughs> you enjoyed it. Any last-minute comments about Heroes of the Storm? No. I recommend it. If you like Blizzard or if you like MOBAs. Um, honestly, I was thinking about what, Jacob, you were saying earlier about bringing in different franchises and stuff like that. And it made me think, I cannot get out of my mind... The idea of a Marvel MOBA. Oh, man. I think that would be pretty fun. That'd be crazy. And that roster could be enormous. Yeah. Enormous. They wouldn't even have to try um, to make that successful, I feel like. Well, and especially- Where that red bee, bro? <clears throat> Where that red bee? <laughs> like, to 
to drop in a character like Deadpool, who has like such a cult following, but is not someone you would think of as a heavy hitter. Right. Like you would sell so many. Yeah. I'm thinking you got Juggernaut. Juggernaut's in there as a warrior. You got, I mean, it's endless. Yeah. Endless. That's, oh, gosh. We could spend another podcast developing this game just, for like, Marvel. talking about yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I'm free. We can just bank another one for next week right now. <laughs> you guys wouldn't have to work. So if you Sunday. hated this, yeah. don't tune in next week. <laughs> I promise next week will be even less funny. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find that show on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. So don't miss the next episode. Uh, we're doing a shitty game, I think. Yeah, probably. probably. More than likely. Yeah. Are you guys announcing next uh, on Wednesday what the next list is going to be? Mm-mm, that won't no. be until January. Oh, you're going to announce in January. Okay. Well, maybe we'll announce like the last episode of December and then start okay. it in January. But. Next episode is going to be a chuckle fest. I guarantee it. All yeah. Right. St. Zach sent me a suggestion for a game that maybe we should do because it sounds really good. Mm, okay. And by really good, I mean horrible. <laughs> it sounds horrible. <laughs> it's an advert game. Okay. It's a new advert game. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. It's a new, the Chick, it's a the new, Chick-fil-A game is finally out. <laughs> it's a new free advert game. That's browser-based. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe for success. The Piggly Wiggly game is finally oh, out. Oh, please. <laughs> you know what we still love? Biggest Marketplace. We need those five-star iTunes reviews. So please go to iTunes, find Tadpog, subscribe, give the show a five-star rating, write a review. You can give us a five star rating, and then I guess shit on us I mean, if you want to. I mean, but subscribe and give us a five star rating; would be nice. Mm-hmm. But we try to further incentivize you so that if there's a, a game you want us to play or a guest host you want in a certain episode, just go ahead and include that in there. And we promise, whatever you include, we'll get to that eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Uh, like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We're going to be talking about probably a shitty game. Um, in the meantime, you can always find us at tadpog.com. That's where the show notes live. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com slash Tadpog. There's a, a lot of cool people there. Uh, they're doing a lot of cool shit. Um, thank you for everybody who commented on the Back to the Future episode post because that has been like the most viewed Facebook post of ours ever, uh, which is amazing to me because the listens on that episode, very low. <laughs> <laughs> I like this idea, but not enough to invest. Well, in <laughs> uh, we're also on Twitter. You, uh, we're at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. Um, thank you for everybody who is retweeting us, uh, especially our episode announcements, because that, of course, helps spread the word. Um, we, if you want to call us, you can uh, leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on an upcoming episode. You can leave us that voicemail at two seven zero eight eight three. Two five five five. Hey, did you enjoy not laughing for the last hour? <laughs> I uh, did. <laughs> I, I also did. You probably didn't. Uh, but if you decide to, anyway, if you decide, hey, I like the not buttholes, uh, you can donate to a Patreon that we've got for the show. Um, we appreciate everybody who has done that already. I know we recently got a pledge from Travis Farmer. So I want to give uh, Travis a shout out. Um, and Soul sister Chandra has uh, increased her pledge. So Chandra, yeah, thank you for that. Well done. Increasing her Patreon pledge and buying all these like characters in Hitch of the Storm and all these erotic novels. Like Chandra, Chandra's doing pretty well. Yeah, doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be, uh, if if you want to kick us a couple bucks, you can go to patreoncom slash tadpog. And this, I guess this this Friday is when we'll drop Zork Part Two. Oh, shit. For the, I'm for to the that. Patreon. So if you want to listen to that, just throw in a, throw in a buck, you'll get it, yeah. and you'll get the Two Out for Two Dudes episode. Yeah. Man, it is almost the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks this for over, awesome. overcoming your social anxiety and coming on and, and talking eloquently yeah, about I hope, this game. I hope you don't get fired. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> no, no, we started calling your work live on the air because I do have that phone number. So <laughs> anyone can have it. You can research where I work. I'm not hard to find, but please don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just prank call you. It's fine. You know how we're good at that. Just read my articles online and 
don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Jacob. Of course. Because I was like, because you you were, I'm going to come in tomorrow. Okay, cool. Are you going to set record? What are you doing? Heroes of the Storm. I don't know anything about that. Me either. That's the point. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I feel at the very least I added to it because I feel like I asked some intelligent questions. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that that you were here. Yeah. So much better than Tyler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Can (laughs) sit on that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I didn't play. I didn't play any of my mobile games that whole time, though. So I was I was that invested that I didn't pick that up to do that. <laughs> I texted, but only like twenty five percent of the time. Yeah, let me tell you how. Let me tell you how awesome it feels to like be talking. Just be talking, and, like, and have no talk, one looking yes, at you. Yes, no one is looking at me. No one is looking at me. <laughs> Phil's on the internet. Jacob's looking at his phone, and Tyler's looking at Meg, Meg's Final Fantasy VIII game, and it's just like. All right, cool. I'm close glad we're. Host- I'm so glad we're doing this. <laughs> You're this close to hosting your own like late night AM radio show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, just guys, imagine let this me tell you about the aliens that came into Wyoming in 1886. <laughs> All right, so there were these aliens, and they were great. And then <laughs> <laughs> I would have listened to that all night. Though. And, they, and they went down the big hill and they and they were about to die and the ghosts killed them the day before they were all supposed to get married. <laughs> oh, God, it feels good to laugh. <laughs> I, I feel like so, I could, sometimes I could tell whenever like somebody is talking and everyone else is checked out listening like. No, that's I know that feeling. I felt it. Guess <laughs> what? I feel like I did last time. Like it was. A, I feel like maybe the last time I did it was a, we were over at your house gaming my game a long time ago, and Nikki started talking about work, and then like I look up and I notice no one is looking at her. So then I'm like, okay, okay, <sighs> work story. Okay, look at her. Make sure. Yes, I'm listening to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she loves talking about work. She does. She loves talking about work. <laughs> and Zach does that a lot too. Where I, most sometimes I'll be like throw Zach a bone and make eye contact. Other times I'll just like no one's listening. Okay, I'm in good company. <laughs> I'm not gonna be the person to take this bullet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No, we love we love you, Zach <laughs> and Nikki. She's the funniest girl at work. It's still true. It is still true. Uh, how do you guys want to close this out? What's the theme song? Oh yeah, Phil. Phil, our everyone theme song. has AIDS by the Team America soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I had that written down. I was like, when are they going to ask me? When are they going to ask me? <laughs> didn't happen. I had that's, to why, that's why I forgot <laughs> about it. <laughs> now, I didn't hear the theme song actually come in. I guess you guys put that in in post. So you can actually put Everyone Has AIDS as the intro to my special guest host. Are you getting that for us? Are, we you, don't, are you donating enough where we can license that? <laughs> we don't like to remind people listening that there are other like really really funny people out there especially for like or diseases <laughs> yeah. no nah, that's fine that's fine i like reminding people that they're diseases <laughs> little known fact moves is entirely about lupus <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i was waiting for a meg reaction on that one didn't get one <laughs> the lupus is funny. Just like, it's, it's not funny it's hurtful But yes, the the theme song is Moves. By, by whom? S- drive. By who? Sycamore Drive. Okay. Where Boobs. can a link to that track by be Sycamore found? Drive. That can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. Got it. All right. There you go. Nailed it. Phil, how would you like to close this out? Um, Someone reading Tropical Capricorn from a written note, but then fucking it up halfway through. Okay. Okay. So me reading Tropical Capricorn as if I'm calling in for the first time. Okay. So until next time, Tropical of Capricorn. Fuck, Fuck that's a book. That's a fucking book. Damn it. I'll I'll call back. (laughs) God damn it. Tropical. (laughs) Wait. Unicorn. (laughs) (laughs) Good job, Phil. Thank you. Yes. There we go. When are we going to get rid of that? Come- Let's kill the drifter to get an erection.